I've never been in here sober before. This is lovely. Um, I just got back from Sheffield, actually. I went to see a Yorkshire theatre company doing Shakespeare. And there's nothing like seeing Shakespeare in a Yorkshire accent. <laughs> to be or not to be, that is to question. <sighs> Personally, I quite fancy a West Country version. All right, my lover. Is this a dagger I see before me? I don't know. <laughs> Mind you, I think we Brummies can have a go. Romeo, Romeo, we're for all that Romeo. <laughs> Sexy, that's what that is. Sexy. I'm a millennial. Are there any millennials in? Give us a cheer. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, but it seems to me that every primary school in the 2000s had the same playground warfare between Harry Potter fans and Lord of the Rings fans. And if you were a Lord of the Rings fan, you were incorrect. Um, I'm a huge Harry Potter fan, but I hadn't seen the film since I was a kid. So in lockdown, I thought, I'll rewatch them all. And that shit is so dark. I can't believe we're showing this to children. Something horrifying happens every summer term. And they all just come back in September. Cedric Diggory dies in year 10, and they all come back in year 11 like, hello, owls. No. <laughs> if one of those things happened in a real school, Ofsted would be in like a shot. Dumbledore would have to be on Midlands today defending himself. <laughs> if one of those things happened to me, I'd expel myself. I'll be a muggle, mate. It's not worth it. I signed up for spells, not trauma. <laughs> and... Uh, you notice a lot re-watching these films as an adult. There's one medic in the entire school. Yeah. Hundreds of witches and wizards come through that school and they're all being healed by one tired woman. <laughs> and her title is still Madam Pumphrey. Oh yeah, we can have flying broomsticks and elves that talk. But a woman doctor, bit of a stretch. And can we all just acknowledge Harry Potter fans in the room? Without Hermione, Harry would have died in book one. He just keeps running at stuff and she's like, for fuck's sake, and has to go and rescue him. <laughs> He's a liability, I'm telling you. If Hermione wasn't there, the book series would be a lot shorter, wouldn't it? Chapter one, the boy who lived, then died because he's an idiot. <laughs> Not Ron though, I think he's just happy to be there, isn't he? Even if Rupert Grint did just have a child and name it Wednesday. Wednesday, the most boring day of the week. At least call it Saturday. Mind you, I know a lot of kids are named after the way they were conceived, so naming it after hump day seems kind of fitting. Um, now, uh, I'm in my 20s, and being in your 20s is such a weird transitional phase because you still feel like a child, but suddenly have to do very adult things. Like, I'm fully registered with HMRC, and the last time I went on a slide was yesterday. <laughs> Do you remember a few years back, they brought out Ladybird books for adults and the famous five books with adult themes? We didn't have the famous five in my day, so I kind of want them to bring out a new series that address millennial issues. We could have titles like, Five Go to the SDI Clinic. <laughs> five Have a Mental Breakdown. Five Get Finger Blasted Behind Greg's. You know, <laughs> relatable stuff. We could have a series for middle-aged people, too. Five go to the chiropodists. Five get HRT patches. Five tell their adult millennial child to move out because they're sick of their shit. Um, now, I'm the pastiest white person you'll ever meet, clearly. And my childhood best friend is mixed race and gorgeous. And being white and growing up with a black best friend is so funny because you will never be as cool as they are. What you wear, your taste in music, your dance moves will always be tragic. Um, but through her, I got into the cool group at school. It was like nerd espionage. It was awesome. And uh, because of that, in year 11, the coolest girl in our year, Olivia, invited us to her house party. Couldn't believe it. And the theme of this party was opposites. She had to get into pairs and dress as two things that are opposites of each other, like Batman and Robin. Little and Large, Piers Morgan and Sex Appeal. <laughs> so we thought it'd be hilarious to go as naughty and nice. So she went as nice, I went as naughty. 
I've got fishnet stockings, back comb my hair, purple lipstick, stilettos, the whole shebang. So I got all dolled up the night of the party, made my way to the front door, and then my mum popped her head round the living room door and went, you're not going out, are you, love? Your dad and I have bought tickets to the cherry orchard this evening. So I had to choose between going to a Chekhov play with my parents or the coolest house party of the year. The Chekhov play was fantastic. I had a lovely time. <laughs> Cracking cast. But because I bailed, my poor friend had to go to this party alone in fancy dress. So she rocked up to Olivia's house and everyone was like, what the fuck have you come, uh, come as? And she was like, I'm nice. I felt awful for weeks. But she wasn't the only one on her own. This one girl had no one to go with, so she just went as broccoli. <laughs> but I wouldn't feel too sorry for her. She got off with the cauliflower from Cauliflower Cheese, so it was a good night. <laughs> Thanks very much. Give it up for Emily McDermott.